And in a diagonal fashion, but probably stacking up on the ground, I'd say anywhere from three to five inches before all is said and done, at least in this spot. However, there are some places around America where you could see the snow from Winterstorm Jackson that could be in 14 inches or even higher, some of it with very dangerous ramifications. Full story coming up in a moment. All right, Reynolds, thank you so much. Welcome back into Weekend Recharge. It is half past the hour. I'm Maria LaRosa. And I'm Alex Wilson. Winter Storm Jackson dominating our weather headlines today. However, this system, not the only game in town. we got to give you the full look. So many sides to it. So we want to get you recharged from this weekend, recharged for the week ahead with our Sunday snapshot. This is how we show you the big stories that we're covering for you. Obviously, Winter Storm Jackson, gusty winds, snow, blizzard conditions. But how about stormy, gusty winds with severe threat? We'll time out all of the impact here. Meanwhile, high pressure is dominating the mm -hmm. eastern side of the country, which means, yeah, 10 to 25 degrees above average from the Gulf Coast to the Great Lakes that may not last all that long because of our winter storm Jackson. So we'll talk temperatures as well. And in the meantime, Philadelphia and Boston both say thank you for the nice weather thank because you. we are hosting awfully important football games today. We'll have a look at that forecast yep. as well. We have it all for you, but we want to start with meteorologist Reynolds Wolf live in Denver for us, our real life Stetson man with your mm -hmm. hat. And uh, Reynolds, we know the snow was a little bit more robust earlier, so they have a little bit more to go in Denver. Absolutely. i got to tell you, though, it actually feels pretty good. Yeah. It really, really does. And it's in the 20s right now. And if you're tuning in from Miami Beach, you might be thinking, man, 20s feels good. You're, you're an idiot. And you might be right, but I will tell you that um, it, it compared to what we've had over the last couple of weeks, the, the bitter cold, the Arctic air we had, say, in Boston when we were live in, in Long Wharf a couple of weekends ago, we had minus 27 degrees, the air temperature of minus 3. So this monster is not the same as that one. However, there will be problems with it. The biggest problem we're going to have is probably going to be travel-wise. In fact, take a look at this video that we have from across the Wasatch Range, and you'll find Salt Lake City where they were really busy yesterday uh, trying to ice off, de-ice de the, the airplanes, and certainly a big hassle for a lot folks a lot of delays and i have to tell you though there is a great component with it uh you've got problems in the roadways but high up in the wasatch range in places like snowbird they're getting the snow that they desperately have been asking for and they've got it here in denver the situation is one where people are not shying away from it it's not garlic to a vampire people have been waiting for the snow it's more like a what took you so long kind of situation well i'll tell you as we take a look at the radar the radar shows that it is coming down we've had times where it's been rather intense certainly early this morning We've had times where it's been a little bit lighter, as is the situation presently. However, it's going to continue on and off until we get to the late evening hours. And by the time that happens, I think we could see anywhere from 3 to 5 in downtown Denver, but some locations perhaps as much as 7 inches of snowfall, and then getting to a halt by the time we get to the later hours, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and that is certainly some of the better news. The uh, bad aspect of it, though... Uh, well, you know, a little bit farther to the east and parts of 70, there's a very real possibility that we're going to have some blizzard conditions, very poor visibility, treacherous driving, and that extends a long way, Maria, all the way back up into the Corn Belt and into the upper Midwest. Absolutely, Reynolds. Thank you so much, by the way, live for us in Denver. Looks beautiful there, but he is absolutely correct. It is going to be really, really bad as we get in through tonight. So think about travel once the sun goes down, I-70, I-80, all in it, and you see especially areas of concern in the pink the blizzard warnings. Remember, it doesn't matter the snowfall forecast here. It's that combination of either the falling snow or the blowing snow um, that reduces visibility to less than a quarter mile and you have yourself a blizzard. So uh, we could potentially have that absolutely. A big dip in the jet stream, that upper level energy giving it power, that wind power that will continue to develop, not to mention the storm threat out ahead of it. But yes, where we have the moisture and that cold air, we're having that snowfall. It, relatively speaking, it's a narrow band that we will see but where it's been coming down, obviously 25, I-70, uh, seeing the darker shades of blue on the radar, a little bit heavier snowfall. We're starting to see that begin to fill in. So if you're heading westbound out of Sioux Falls towards uh, Rapid City, uh, tough driving right now, very quickly driving, uh, changing driving conditions. So that's going to be our focus. I-70, one of those interstates, you head out Kansas City, showers and thunderstorms, maybe, and then you transition to heavy, heavy snow. By the way, Colby up towards uh, Goodland, Kansas, you've only managed a couple of 
12 inches of snowfall this entire season, by the way. So that is uh, obviously a high impact storm for you this go around. I-80 also, whiteout conditions are possible, but that snow will be heavy at times. That's the key takeaway for sure. By tonight, that rain all the way up to, say, Madison, but on that north side, Minneapolis, as an example, again, that snow will be heavy at times. Think terrible morning drive tomorrow and possibly that evening commute. Sioux City, 8 to 12 inches of snowfall, but look at that, Alex, 25 to 45 mile per hour winds. That's with the snow, but you could be looking at that with thunderstorms across the south. Yeah, mild air across parts of the south. We've got Gulf of Mexico moisture as well. How about 64 this morning? It's 930 in the morning in Shreveport, Louisiana. You look at your thermometer and you're going, whew, what a change. 64 pretty comfortable. Now, later today, we've got to watch for showers, thunderstorms, and some of these storms could be on the strong or even severe side. But beyond that, things will be much quieter for the rest of the week in Shreveport. That is until we get to next weekend. Let's take a pic peek at the picture on the radar right now. We've got plenty of uh, spotty showers well to the west of Houston. Also some spotty wet weather west of Little Rock. There is not much else on the radar, and even what we're seeing has been very light and scattered in nature. Dew points, though, they are in the low 60s for Dallas and San Antonio, 58 Lake Charles. So we're seeing that reflection of those southerly winds, that Gulf of Mexico warmth and moisture coming into play. Storm system tracking east. Of course, this is Winter Storm Jackson. This is the warm side of this system. So beneath the warm front or south of the warm front, we have those uh, temperatures on the mild side. We've got moisture. And now with this storm system in play, we've also got upper level winds punching east. And these upper level winds are changing speed and direction with height. And that allows us to have have that increased shear, as we call it. Basically, again, shear, just a change in wind speed with height or a change in wind direction and height. And so shear today is on the high side, instability low. So that's going to uh, keep that uh, severe threat from being overly high. But we do think there is at least some severe threat. Hail can't be ruled out. Think better chance for damaging winds. Medium opportunity for that for parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, into Louisiana and Texas. Isolated tornado, also a threat, but I think isolated, the key word there. Highs today, Maria, in the 60s and 70s. As you might imagine, we are tracking a lot of changes for you right here on Weekend Recharge. The snow coming down. The power could be going out, too. We'll break down what you should do to protect your home and family when the electricity goes offline. What you need to know now before it happens.